I firmly believe that history does not just happen. It is the result of choice. Writing about, about causes of the First World War, Australian historian Christopher Clarke described the politicians of that time as lunatics, as people who were wholly unaware of the consequences of their own actions. I believe that war is never inevitable. It is always the result of either a conscious decision or a lack of thereof. Their it takes courage to face the truth. The massacre in Bucha, the murder of civilians in Irpian, the hecatomb in Mariupol. All these events should wake us from our geopolitical slumbers and cause us to cast off our own delusions, our old delusions. But is that enough? I hear there are attempts to allow Putin to somehow save face in the international arena. But how can you save something that has been utterly disfigured? Today, with good reason, we are trying to understand the dynamics of the revival of Russian imperialism and perhaps even its totalitarianism. But we must also be ready to take a good look in the mirror and answer questions about our own identity and strategy in a world once again filled with uncertainty. I would like to thank the Polish Institute of International Affairs for organizing the meeting in Warsaw. It is hard to find a more appropriate place to talk about the future of the West. 100 years ago, a battle took place on the outskirts of Warsaw, which shaped the world order for the following two decades. Now the battle for Ukraine may decide the future of the next 100 years. The paradox of this war is that if Ukraine wins, it will be the first and foremost her victory. But if she loses, it will not be so much her defeat as defeat for us all and the end of the world as we know it. This is why I make such an unequivocal urge for the isolation of Russian president. Yes, diplomacy requires dialogue, but you cannot negotiate with terrorists. Criminals must be brought to justice and their ideology, the ideology of Ruski Mir, must be vanquished. Ladies and gentlemen, as the inception, at the inception of geopolitics, Poland was recognized as a heartland, a country of strategic importance for the whole of Europe. Whoever rules the heart rules the whole of Europe. Today, the heart is not only to be found in Poland, but in Ukraine, the Baltic states, and all of the Central and Eastern Europe. Our quite special position in Europe means that we cannot only be the heart, its heart, but also its conscience. For us, the evils of the 20th century are not merely distant history, but still a living mem memory. Too many times we witnessed the turmoil of war and too often we saw its horrors to now ignore the warning signs. Credible deterrence is essential. Russia can only be deterred by our unity and military cap capabilities and hard sanctions. Not by phone calls and conversations with Putin, but by military aid to Ukraine and strengthening NATO's eastern flank. United, we are much stronger than Russia. Putin is not the madman that some claim him to be. He knows that the only way to defeat the West is to divide it. Therefore, as a counteroffensive, we must build a new unity. Putin's 
expenditure requires a quick vi victory. Ukraine took away this chance from him, but he still counts on uh, being able to survive the political and economic gains. These must be rendered impossible by a uni united West. Russia should be punished politically for attacking the European security system, of which it was a co-creator. It is not enough to say that the NATO-Russian Funding Act is already dead in letter. We must officially terminate this act. And also, Nord Stream 1 should be abandoned as soon as possible. But that is, that is still not enough. Permanent allied bases should be established in the countries of eastern flank. Poland is ready to build such bases, which, should, which would station allied troops on a permanent basis. Russia needs to know that we will not cede even one inch of NATO territory. I consider Sweden and Finland joining uh, of NATO a significant strengthening of peace and security in Europe and serious defeat of the Kremlin. And I want to make it clear that in the event of an attack on Sweden and Finland during the, the, their accession process, Poland will, not, will come to their aid. We must also be aware that NATO enlargement to include Sweden and Finland is a political commitment of the entire transatlantic community to Ukraine. It is the defenders of Mariupol, Kharkiv and Kiev who opened their door to NATO enlargement with heroic their heroic struggle. These doors must remain open to them as well, to the Ukrainians. Finally, a word on economics. For years, Poland has warned its allies that Russia could take, could take advantage of Europe's dependence on supplies of Russian natural resources, especially oil and gas, to further its imperial aspirations. Let me remind you that as early as 2008, Poland proposed the creation of an energy NATO in Europe to eliminate the threat of Russian energy blackmail. The proposal in 2008 was rejected. Today we know that this was to make the European free market more competitive by means of lower energy costs obtained by, pre by preferential prices from Russia. If I know anything about free market competition, such a mechanism should never have, have had anything to do with it. It turned out that Poland was right about Russia's intentions. Fortunately, we implemented our own strategy and we did not believe the assurances that Russia would always be a reliable partner in energy policy. We managed to diversify our energy sources and today we can help the entire region. By waging war with Ukraine, Russia is using energy to raise the cost of providing Ukraine with aid and generating inflation. We must get this weapon out of the, uh, her hands. The economy is the, the other front in the struggle against Russia. Ukrainian soldiers hold the, the first front with our help. They are overcoming Russian military potential. We must win on the, the other front and break Russia's economic potential. Ladies and gentlemen, we must remember that it is not enough to win the war. We must also win, we must also not lose the peace. We must make a pact that Russia will never again threaten peace in Europe and that the price of maintaining it will be paid by those who do not belong to the EU and NATO. The victory of freedom and solidarity over imperialism, nationalism and colonialism must be our collective achievement. Reviving the community of the West and during martial law in Poland, we proclaimed 
that there is no freedom without solidarity. Today, I believe that there will be no West without a free and victorious Ukraine.